What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Taste Like Music. Jason, Joe, and Krams are here. Fleetwood Mac week, thanks to Joe winning the poll back in October. We will be covering Joe's selections all month long. We've still got Whitney Houston and Blur to go after this. Right now, it's time for everybody's favorite game of Rank the Band Members. We did this for the Eagles back in the day, one of our first side threes, and people got very mad at us. Then we tried it again for the birds, and that video went a little sideways. <laughs> so here we go. We got even more members today for Fleetwood Mac. Uh, quick note, we are only counting the members that have appeared on record. So we are not counting the newest additions to the band, uh, Mike Campbell and Neil Finn. They have never played on a record even though they have toured with them so that leaves us with 16 members to rank who would like to go first are we going to go around is that how we're doing this yeah let's just do 16s real quick let's blaze through and we don't want another birds and in- <laughs> that was a puzzle to edit i'll start at 16 big traffic fan but dave mason you show up for one album and it's one of the worst albums ever it's a one-star effort and you're barely even recognizable on it sorry dave mason you're number 16 but i don't really think you know you expect it to be a top tier fleet of mac number yeah um i'm going with a different dave for my 16 i got dave walker he appears on two tracks and that's it and then they fired his ass but apparently he was the front guy for savoy brown and briefly Black Sabbath. So I don't know when that was, but hell of a career for that guy. Never heard of him. You th- would think that the easy selection for the bottom should be Bob Running, who was the original bass player, and then John V joined, but he still appears on one track on the debut record. And that's all he does. He plays bass on one song in the entire catalog. But I got to go with a guy who, instead of just, just being pretty anonymous, actively destroyed a couple records and that is billy burnett who i think is one of the worst singers that i've ever heard on a major label record uh just the the amount of plainness is just staggering yep he's my number 15 lame singer and he's on time and behind the mask at least Vito knew to get the hell out of there so Number 15, I'm with you. I got Billy Burnett. Billy Burnett will not be appearing anytime soon for me. I got original bass player Bob Brunning, one track. I couldn't, you know, pick him out of a lineup or pick his bass tone out of a lineup. And he was quickly replaced with John McVie, who gave us how is how is that even possible? Didn't the name Fleetwood Mac come from John McVie? Like, how is he not in the original band? It doesn't make sense to me. I could be I, wrong about this. I, th- I think some tracks were recorded prior to actually being a band. I don't know. There you go. Mystery to me. My number 15 is Bob Running. Also, as we discussed, he plays on one track, so not very consequential. You got to give running more credit for not being on behind the mask or time and Vito's on one of those, but you're giving Vito the credit for leaving before time. So that's why he's ahead of Burnett for me. Just a great career move. I mean, I don't care if you play kazoo for one bar on any other album than time or behind the mask. You're a better musician in my book. It's a really, really hard on behind the mask. I I don't quite get it. Number 14, uh, he was great in traffic and terrible in Fleetwood Mac, Dave Mason. I don't, if if I hadn't seen his name in the credit and we weren't doing this membership ranking, I have no idea he was in this band. He brings nothing to the table, but he's, he was good in traffic. So. Speaking of bringing nothing to the table, my number 14 is Dave Walker. He is a blemish on the otherwise pretty decent Penguin record with just two clunkers right in the middle, and that's all he does, and then he's gone. 13 for me. I got Becca Bramlett. She's on time, so she can't be much higher. However, 
I don't think the vocals are as bad as like Burnett. And, uh, you know, it's not, this wasn't her fault for sure. So she did what she could, but top 10 Fleetwood Mac. No, Becca, no. Yeah, she's also my number 13 prolific backup singer. Her list of credits is just ridiculous. Uh, her lead stuff, kind of not great. Probably the best part of time, however, is small praise, as faint praise as that may be. Uh, I didn't think she was terrible on the album that otherwise is not good. So she's 13, not bad. She's 13, not bad. Let's let's use that audio clip and ruin uh, Joe's life. My 13 is Rick Vito. He comes in for a bad record. Doesn't really do a lot. Yeah. My number 12, I got the prolific Bob Brunning giving his bass services to Fleetwood Mac. Barely two tracks and then uh at least mcvee like came in and pretty good bass player and held down the bass spot while everyone else was just flying around roster wise as a franchise player good for him but yeah running number 12 i'm gonna go with uh billy burnett with my number 12 i don't like his name very much i don't think billy burnett is a good rock star name at all and he's just so middle of the road like as average as you possibly can get on Behind the Mask and Time, just completely brings the band, the great band like Fleetwood Mac, down to just like average as hell, like adult contemporary, you know, rock and roll, not even rock and roll, pop rock, let's be honest, there's no roll going on there. Uh, yeah, big, big kind of letdown, especially when you consider Buckingham Kerwin, Welch, you know, all the greatness in the past, and then you get this guy, so. I've got uh, Becca Bramlett next. I guess a pleasant voice, but like Billy Burnett, just very plain, not a whole lot of character, and certainly not enough charisma to front a band like Fleetwood Mac. No, no, she didn't. My number 11, Dave Walker coming in throwing in some backing vocals on Penguin and harmonica here and there. Didn't hate it. That's good enough for the 11 spot. And I'm going to go with uh, Mr. Vito, number 11. Rick Vito, also not a great rock and roll name. I don't, I don't really like that one, especially, you know, you got like Mick Fleetwood. And it's like Rick Vito. Come on. <laughs> that doesn't work at all, at all. Um, and his guitar work, again, completely uninspiring middle of the road adult contemporary you know he, he could be on like the amy grant record or something like that like that that's his kind of style it's it's not for fleetwood uh, my next one is dave mason he only has two songs on the worst fleetwood mac album but his tracks are better than becca bramlett's and they are better than billy burnett's uh for sure so you know and he's Dave Mason, so he gets a little credit for that. All right, top 10. Here are some of your favorite members of Fleetwood Mac. I'm going to kick it off with Bob Weston. Guitar and such work. Sounded pretty damn good on uh, Penguin and Mystery to Me. It's not, you know, he's not a top three or four guitarist for Fleetwood Mac, but he's up there. Um, so that's good enough to get the top 10 spot. Bob Weston. Yep. Also my number 10, Bobby W, uh, his work with Welch. I think they, I don't know, he only has like one or two writing credits, but the albums that he were on, probably the best of that kind of middle 70s era. So I'm assuming he must have had something to do with it. And therefore, top 10 Fleetwood Mac member. Yeah. A unanimous number 10, Bob Weston. I don't think Bob Weston and uh, Bob Welch ever gelled the way he uh, Welch and Kerwin did. He always felt like a little off, but the records aren't terrible. And he's not the worst part of Penguin. So there you go. Yeah, sorry to we're, be basic and everyone have him at 10 like every other publication does. But, you know, it is when something's as sure as Bob Weston at number 10. You got to pull the tr trigger. Number nine, this is where I get controversial. 
A lot of people have him at number eight, but I'm putting Jeremy Spencer at number nine. Um, <laughs> you know, founding member, decent. I know, man. Oh, cool off down there, Joe. Decent singer, a little virtuoso, like playing a little piano, a little guitar here, a little slide. Not bad, Jeremy Spencer. Number nine. I'm about to blow your mind, Cramser. Number nine, Jeremy Spencer, baby. Great slide guitarist. Probably the most interesting part of those first two albums. Then he decides to just go and join a cult just completely out of the blue, which probably changed, you know, everything about the band, the history how they ended up with Stevie Nicks and everybody else at all, because Jeremy Spencer really wanted to join a cult, just out of the blue. They didn't know where he was. I don't know if he gains points or loses points for that. Um, but yeah, he, he's a number nine uh, Fleetwood Mac member, for sure. Changed the course of history of Fleetwood Mac, yep. I wonder where, wonder where he would rank within that cult. Is he good cult or good cult guy or what? Apparently still active in the cult too. So he was in it for the long haul. No punch. No, no punch. Uh, Jonestown massacre kind of thing. Not yet. Number nine for me. I'm not going Jeremy Spencer yet. I'm going Peter Green. Uh, believe it or not. I don't know. I just wasn't that impressed with Peter Green's playing. It's serviceable. Good blues rock. But I don't really hear much more than that. And neither do I, Jason, which is why I have Peter Green at number eight. You know, um, pretty cool vision for the early stuff. But like we said, you know, our complaints and criticisms of the Peter Green albums are kind of our complaints about Peter Green himself. Good guitarist, not great. Band had much better things on the horizon. Come on. Yeah, I got uh, Peter Green at number eight. Probably should be number nine if I'm basing it just on which guitarist I like better. I'm going to give Peter Green some bonus points for being the originator of the band and Green Manalishi uh, kind of hints at what could have been if he was not so bluesy and, uh, you know, that direction. If he'd gone like a metal hard rock, like he was hinting on, on that, would have been great. But alas, he did not. So he's only number eight. I'll go Jeremy Spencer at number eight. I like his slide work on the early stuff. I think it stands out a little more than Peter Green's playing. And I also like when he comes back on Kiln House and he's doing kind of these weird uh, 50s parody impressions, singing like Elvis and stuff. I think I think it's an entertaining record. So Jeremy Spencer, number eight. All right. This is where it gets tough. I think all seven of the remaining members are pretty worthy. Um. I'm going to go with Mick Fleetwood here. I know we were saying that his drumming deserves a little more credit and he's kind of a backbone, but I'm a guitar guy. I got six of them behind me. I'm going to throw the guitarists over there. And I think Mick V is a little more underrated as a bassist as Mick is as a drummer, but Mick is a pretty good drummer. Um, he also has apparently a really cool restaurant in Honolulu or in Hawaii um that serves blt bruschetta which sounds great so had to be above eight just for that bruschetta okay well you're gonna go that direction i'm gonna start knocking some of these guitarists off my list i got bobby welch number seven very good guitarist i think he's a very good songwriter probably a better songwriter than guitarist i'm, I'm not sure it's, it's hard to tell who's playing all these leads and everything uh, but during that kind of middle awkward era between Kerwin and Buckingham, really sort of, you know, brought the band to a really nice level of, you know, four star album. So like them a lot. But still, we're, we're getting into territory where it's like, yeah, you got to be just, you know, the best Fleetwood Mac member to, to be. So it doesn't quite doesn't quite make it. Brace yourselves, gentlemen. My number seven is Stevie Nicks. And here's why. The first record that she's on, she sings two songs. She's great on Rumors. And then after that, I don't think any of her material is really that great. I think uh, Lindsey Buckingham and Christine McVie really carry the records. So she's got like one album's worth of, of great tracks from Fleetwood Mac. 
you know, she, she did well in her solo career, but I think once that solo career started, uh, I think she kind of treated Fleetwood Mac like an afterthought for a while. Okay. Um, my number six, I'm going to go with John McVie, bassist, really good bass player. Um, and kind of like the quiet, just rock foundation of the group when they needed it most, probably kept the band going. Mary Christine. Um, yeah, good bass work, underrated. But I'm a guitar guy. The guitars blow me away in Fleetwood Mac. So that's where you go. That's where I go from the list on, pretty much. I imagine uh, my number six is your Clarence White. He'll be like first somehow or something. But I got to throw Danny Kerwin down at number six. I think he's great, really interesting style. Um, but he was only in the band for a couple albums. And they're not the best albums that the band produced. So I can't have them ahead of Lindsay. I can't have them ahead of the principal songwriters of the glory days of Fleetwood. So I got to put him at six. No disrespect to him because definitely a guitarist I was unfamiliar with and now really like. But this is a Fleetwood Mac ranking, you know, so I got to be real. I got to be real with you. My number six is also Danny Kerwin. I like him a lot. And I think in tandem with Bob Welch is amazing. Uh, but I don't know. Songwriting wise, I don't think he stands up to the best songwriters that Fleetwood Mac have ever had in their ranks. And uh, guitar playing wise, probably, you know, my third favorite. So, you know, got to have some people ahead of him. Agree. I got Danny Kerwin at number five. Third favorite guitarist, not quite as good a player as Welch or Buckingham, but pretty darn good, especially playing off Welch, which playing off the guitarist you know is a little bit better than you is a tough task that he does very aptly. And one of the reasons why I love doing this week was finding those albums where him and Welch were really gelling. So proud to have him in my top five, Mr. Kerwin. All right, uh, Jason had her a little lower, but I don't think he was way off base. I got Stevie Nicks, number five, as much as I do love her and her solo career. Kind of agree with Jason. Uh, rumors, obviously the high point. I think her work on Mirage is great, however. But Tusk and um, Tango in the Night, a little tossed off. She didn't quite commit. Once she went solo, she kind of, you know, Eh, and she was a huge drug addict, so she was also in rehab for a lot of time. Kind of phoned it in a little bit, left it to Buckingham to piece it all together. So she's my number five. I do love her, though. I, I love witchy woman Stevie Nicks. My number five is Bob Welch. I love the Bob Welch era. I think he has a really unique style and sound. I love his songwriting and some of the chords he uses are so cool, very identifiable. I think, you know, really puts a stamp on a song. You can really tell when it's him. And yeah, great. I love him. Number four, I got Stevie Nicks. I think she has some great songs. I love her voice, not as much as Christine McVie's or Lindsay Buckingham's. Very close to Christine McVie's. But McVie, been there longer, plays some keys. Stevie's not playing any instruments, so, you know, uh, got to be number four for me, Stevie Nicks. My number four, going to go with bass player, rock, John McVie, quite underrated, his bass playing. I think he only has one bass solo in the entire catalog, which is actually probably more than what most bass players get, but his lines are super memorable, even on something as simple as a song like Dreams, just... It, it works so well. I, it's like two notes, the entire song, but it's just instantly memorable. He plays it perfectly, tone-wise, perfect. And he gets, you know, he gets to let loose a little bit on something like Tusk, but um, just a rock. He's been there from the beginning, and you know, I think he only has like two writing credits, so kind of in the shadows, but, you know, that's what bass players do. We don't complain. We just sit there play our bass, 
don't break up with anybody. Although Ian McVie broke up Christine, but there's no drama behind it. There's no like rumors too. Like it just happened. Everyone went on with their lives. It's fine. I'm going with John McVie at number four as well. Really great bass player. And John McVie and Mick Fleetwood are one of my favorite rhythm sections of all time. I think they are just incredible. Uh, like Joe said, great pocket, great tone, great feel. He writes pretty cool lines. Um, and I like the story of when uh, Lindsey Buckingham first joined and was kind of like trying to tell everybody what to play and like how to play the songs. And uh, John said to Lindsey, you're in Fleetwood Mac and I am the Mac. Don't tell me how to play bass. Good for him. The precursor to return of the Mac. Very cool. My number three is my Clarence White moment. I got Bob Welch. Like Clarence White of the Birds. Found a really cool 70s guitar player with tremendous feel, jazzy vibes, R&B kind of style. Really unique style. I love it. I love his work on those albums. I love him playing off Kerwin. It would be ridiculous for me to put him ahead of the ones I've got at one and two. I mean, he's not the best guitar player in Fleet Mac, but he is a gem if you don't know his work. Love it. Bob Welch probably loses a couple points because of the similar name with the pitcher. He's not, he's probably not the most famous Bob Welch and that, that probably hurts him a little bit. You don't hear him talked about much, interestingly. Uh, my number three, I'm gonna go with the other McVie here. I'm gonna go with Christine McVie, leaving uh, Fleetwood and Buckingham at the top alone. Love McVie. Uh, I think she really, you know, when she comes in in 71, 70, whatever it was, just right off the bat, great pop tunes, pretty much straight through Fleetwood Mac's run. Uh, never quite evolves much beyond it, but kind of when you have your thing and you can do it so well year after year after year, that's all you really need. She nails it. Great voice as well. And yeah, it's just kind of the center that holds all the different eras of Fleetwood Mac together. So a strong number three for Christine McVie. Full disclosure, I did dock Bob Welch a point because of his name's similarity to the grape juice. Uh, my number three is Mick Fleetwood. Uh, just, you know, he's been there the whole time. His name is in the band name. He's a great drummer and his uh, drum sounds are always really cool. And his drum parts are always really interesting. And, you know, I think he's great. I can't put him really at one or two because you need to have the songs. But, you know, love a good rhythm section and they're a great one. Number two. Christine McVie, I love her voice. I think she is an underrated vocalist. I think she emotes a different kind of energy than Stevie does. And I think she's a great songwriter as well, but like something she belts out like Songbird is just fantastic. It's like really sweet molasses and like honey, but there's like a feminine brightness to it as well without it being all dainty. It's tremendous. She's been there a long time. She plays the keys, super cool, just style to her singing. Number two, Christine McVie. All right, obviously he's not gonna be my number one. I'm not crazy. Mick Fleetwood is my number two. Truly really just one of the most underrated drummers, I think, ever. All of his parts, I mean, I, I would just find myself listening to that and Lindsey Buckingham's guitar, you know, from Fleetwood Mac on. And then I would go back and listen to the older stuff and I would notice all these cool things that he was doing. Um, don't always notice the drums, but I think this week more than almost any other that we've done other than like Rush or something, uh, just really drinking in all that Mick Fleetwood has to offer. Plus, you know, when your name is Fleetwood and the band is Fleetwood Mac, like he's the dude, like he's, you know, the guy. So I got to give props to the progenitor of the name Fleetwood Mac. And, you know, Mac, Mac is cool, like Mac V. But like Fleetwood, that's when you know, like Mac could be anything. That's just like, you know, it could be a truck or something. Fleetwood, that's where the money comes from. Didn't see all the weight in the last names and surnames you guys are going to put into this. Thing. <laughs> My number two is Lindsey Buckingham because I'm a big fan of the Buckinghams uh, and their names are similar. 
Okay. <laughs> My number one is Lindsey Buckingham. Talked a lot about Bob Welch and enjoying his really unique style and playing. Buckingham has just a little bit more styling and technique and is obviously a much better writer especially with not just songs in its entirety, but with guitar parts. He makes more memorable guitar parts served because of the style of songs that he writes. But I'm also going to talk about him having one of my favorite male voices of all time. I think it's really cool. I think it's in that great range of not being too low or too high. And he's a really passionate singer, which I love. I love listening to their live stuff to really hear him get down into like his the pit of his stomach and belt stuff out like and go your own way which sounds so effortless on the recording but you know it's not easy to sing live really loud really powerful and keep your voice that clean which he does Lindsay buckingham number one don't give a shit what your last name is man just play the guitar and write and sing like you do not like these guys you can call yourself Lindsay the legend whatever Easy number one for me, despite only being in the band for its second half or whatever. I just think he, I hate, I hate doing this because I do it all the time. I always say people are underrated or overrated, but he, he has to be. Last time Rolling Stone made a top 100 guitarist list, he was 100. That's insane. He's so unique, so interesting, so pretty, and yet also like hard and metallic at the same time. The way he goes from acoustic to electric. Uh, his voice, the way he goes from like a, a strong kind of like, um, you know, rock vocals on something like Go Your Own Way and then does like this hissing kind of like weird paranoid style all throughout Tusk. Um, just so unique and interesting and different. Everything that he touched was better. He did the production on, you know, um, Mirage and Tango of the Night. And you can just kind of tell, like, he was the direction of the band. He took it where he wanted to go. Um, and then I think they made some pretty dang great records while he was in the band. So got to give it to, to Lindsay, who's on all three of my five-star Fleetwood Mac albums. I kind of kind of skimmed over Lindsay last time, but I will say utterly unique guitar player in the history of rock. Really great. But my number one is Christine McVie. Uh, just her longevity in the band. I mean, I think even though she wasn't an official member, I think she had a part in every single record except for the first one. And then she's not a member on Say You Will either, but I think she does play some organ on it and stuff. So uh, she's been there a long time. And I think of the records that she's on, almost every one of them. I don't know if there's one where a song of hers wouldn't be in at least in my top three favorite songs from the record, except maybe Rumors. Uh, but other than that, I think, yeah, she's consistently turning out good songs. She's got some bad ones in there, but, but by and large, she's very consistent and very good. Very nice. 100 on the top guitarist list, man. Was Vito and Burnett the 99 and 98 since they were the best thing to ever happen to Fleetwood Mac. Got you there, Rolling Stone. We're, we're done, right? <laughs> <laughs> we have to be. We got to be done. All right, that's it. Fleetwood Mac week is in the books. Play along if you like down in the comments. Let us know how you rank the members. And let us know what you think of our lists. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our website is in the video description. Check those out, follow us, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.